So as you all know, President Biden gave his first State of the Union speech yesterday, and like all political YouTubers, I considered streaming this because that's what everyone else was doing. But then I decided I love myself too much, so I decided to farm runes in Elden Ring instead while I listened to it in the background, and I'm very much happy with my decision. Um, but because I wasn't actually watching it, because I only listened to it, I missed this insanely bizarre moment that I later discovered when I logged onto Twitter. Many of you have been there. I've been in and out of Iraq and Afghanistan over 40 times. These what was that? What is she doing? <laughs> Can she not just pretend to be a normal human being for a single hour until he finishes his speech? What is what is she doing? What is that? I don't even know how to process what we just saw there. Jesus Christ. Um, but then there's also Chuck Schumer, who didn't necessarily have the timing down when it comes to when you should stand up to applaud. The American Rescue Plan helped working people. Democratic Party leadership is just so embarrassing. They are a national embarrassment. They are humiliating. They're just insufferable. So I think that you already can kind of gather what my thoughts on the entire State of the Union speech was, given my attitude and my overtly cynical view of everything. But I mean, I always am not very fond of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, to be clear. Uh, but when it comes to Joe Biden's speech, look, it wasn't all bad, right? There were moments where I think he did a good job at being a presentable leader. When he told Americans, you're going to be okay when he was discussing Ukraine in the context of possible nuclear war with Russia. That's important. That's something that Trump would never do. You do have to reassure citizens that things are going to be okay, not just further fan the flames. You're supposed to calm them down. And that's what he did. And I think that that was indeed important. Um, on top of that, he bragged about his response to COVID-19. And I think that you should do that. You know, the way that vaccines have been rolled out and have been widely available and free, that's important. That matters. He also talked about how he shipped more vaccines to developing countries than any other country. And that's good. Definitely not sufficient, to be clear, but still something that I would indeed be bragging about if I were president. But aside from that, the speech, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. It seemed pointless. I don't know what the point of the speech was. It was a lot of empty rhetoric. He talked about his plans and things that he wants to, in theory, see happen. He discussed the myriad ways Americans are suffering. But he doesn't actually have a plan to fight for them. My plan is X. My plan is this. Hey, Let's let Medicare negotiate drug prices. Let's do X. Let's do Y. The problem is that how are you going to fight for them? That's the key thing that we need to hear. And since you failed to get your plan enacted into law because you have two members of Congress who you refuse to call out obstructing your agenda, well, make some announcements. Tonight, I am signing an executive order, announcing that I'm signing an executive order tomorrow, canceling all student debt, moving cannabis off of schedule one you can make so many exciting announcements that would galvanize people but it didn't happen now perhaps you know i am too cynical because apparently according to uh polls people who tuned in seemed pretty happy i think the number was 78 percent of americans approved of his speech but for me i've been following politics for long enough to where i can see past the rhetoric politicians who diagnose the problems and then propose plans, that's one thing. But the question is, how do you fight to get these things enacted? And we we got nothing. And where we saw no desire to fight, we got no announcements of what he'd be doing unilaterally via executive order. And maybe you think I'm being too cynical. I don't think that I am being too cynical. But it seems like AOC actually agrees with me. And she expressed her disappointment in Biden's speech, albeit in a much more nicer way. So Michael Schnell of The Hill explains, Ocasio-Cortez, speaking to MSNBC during an interview after Biden's speech, said there were some things that were left unsaid in the president's remarks, specifically pointing to student loan debt, education, and immigration. I do think that there are some things that were left unsaid in which we're really going to have to work on as a party in order to really speak to constituencies that have historically supported the president, whose turnout we need, and whose support we need right now and in the coming years, that perhaps haven't heard their issues spoken 
to in a way that they wanted to hear it, Ocasio-Cortez said when asked if she liked the president's speech. Things like student loan debt, larger themes and crises in education, as well as the piece on immigration was really just glossed over, Ocasio-Cortez said. We heard, you know, some speaking to dreamers, but dreamers want their families to be able to stay. They don't want to be separated from their parents either, Ocasio-Cortez said. So I think there's some themes that left a little bit to be desired for key constituencies in the Democratic base, but the president's goal was very clear. He was laser focused on really projecting a theme of unity, and I think he stuck to that, she added. And sure, I, I think that that's pretty fair. She's nicer than I am here with regard to his speech, but I mean, she's not going to say his speech was terrible, but she's essentially saying very gently, hey, Biden, your speech was terrible and we're all going to get wiped out if you don't do something. Now, yes, he did focus on unity, a unity agenda, fighting, uh, you know, the opioid epidemic. These are things that nobody disagrees with, but the problem is that saying that you want to do things is different than doing things. And I mean, your rhetoric isn't going to unify the country. Getting things done, ameliorating the suffering of Americans is going to be what unifies the country, or at least, I don't know, stops people from running back into the arms of Republicans every two to four years after you inevitably disappoint. So, I mean, the speech to me, it felt incredibly just pointless. You went there to talk about Build Back Better without mentioning Build Back Better, I believe. Um, all these wonderful things that you were dangling in front of us, but all of us know it's not going to pass. I mean, he called on Congress to get it done. When it comes to voting rights, he said to the Senate, get this done. Come on, let's act. But why are these things being blocked? It's because of members of your own party. How powerful would it have been for you to name and shame Cinema and Mansion? I mean, he talked about abortion rights when that same day, or maybe the day before. Either way, Manchin sided with the Republicans to block an abortion bill in the Senate. So you can talk about all of these wonderful things, but voters don't give a flying fuck about all of these things if you don't get them accomplished. I care about the policies getting passed, not cited. I care about the crises being addressed, not cited. Rhetoric is meaningless when we're this far down the drain, when we're, we're circling the drain and we're nearly down the drain. So we need more than rhetoric. And, you know, State of the Union speeches, they are largely fluff. They are just rhetoric based. But he could have used this opportunity to re-energize the base, re-energize young people. And he didn't do that. So by my standards, he failed. But that was exactly my expectation. I expected him to disappoint. But I certainly didn't expect Nancy Pelosi to be as bizarre as she was. But I mean, she's kind of a weird person. We have leaders who are just... I don't know, their brains are melting before our very eyes and, you know, they're not doing anything. They're all rich, so they're comfortable. They don't care. I just feel frustrated. But, I mean, this is exactly what I expected to feel, which is why I didn't really want to watch the State of the Union and I opted to listen and, you know, comfort myself through the cynicism by playing video games because we keep hearing the same things from politicians, but nothing gets accomplished. Actually fucking act and stop talking for once. That's what I want people to take away from this. Stop talking, start doing. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.